हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे विल डिस्कस अबाउट द मसल्स ऑफ मेस्टिकेशन यू नो दैट देर आर फोर मसल्स ऑफ मेस्टिकेशन मेनली दे आर नोन एज लैटरल एंड मीडियल टेरिगॉइड मैसेटर एंड टेम्पोरलिस सो टुडे विल डिस्कस दीज मेन मसल्स बिकॉज वेन यू विल सी द मसल्स ऑफ मेस्टिकेशन दे आर डिवाइडेड इन टू द टू ग्रुप प्रिंसिपल मसल्स एंड असेसरी मसल्स असेसरी मसल्स आर एक्चुअली द सुप्रा हायर्ड मसल्स for that you can refer my youtube video on the supra hyoid muscle and we have already done the lateral pterygoid in my last video today we'll discuss the temporalis masseter and medial pterygoid muscle so let's start with the medial pterygoid muscle now medial pterygoid muscle is having the two head now if you remember the lateral pterygoid we have seen that lateral pterygoid muscle is also having the two head small upper head and large lower head here again you have the two head but they are known as superficial head and deep head now what is the meaning of superficial and deep head the first thing is that when you will see the section of the infratemporal region dissection in this region in this region you can see that this is the superficial head because when you are going from outside to inside this is the small head which will come first then you have the lower larger head of your lateral pterygoid now deep to this you will find the larger deep head of medial pterygoid so you have to understand the arrangement of the three parts of different muscle first is superficial part of medial pterygoid then you have larger part of lateral pterygoid and then we have the major origin of medial pterygoid so this is why we are having the superficial and deep head of medial pterygoid and intervened by the larger head of lateral pterygoid muscle so this is the meaning of superficial head and deep head of medial pterygoid now we'll see the origin of these two head so the small superficial head which is a small slip arises from maxillary tuberosity and the adjacent lateral surface of palatine bone now once you will see this diagram first we will locate these bony point we discuss the two bony point here now here you can see that this is the maxillary part this is the superior alveolar process now on the posterior side you have these projection and these are known as your maxillary tuberosity this is known as maxillary tuberosity so this point will give rise to the your small slip of medial pterygoid so when you will see the small superficial head of medial pterygoid it arises from maxillary tuberosity now you are able to understand what do you mean by maxillary tuberosity with adjacent part of palatine bone now this superficial slip passing over the lower margin of lateral pterygoid which i just told you that why it is known as superficial we are using the word superficial and deep part of medial pterygoid in reference to the lateral pterygoid so the lateral pterygoid is a intervening muscle between the superficial and deep part of your medial pterygoid so here in this diagram you can see that this is the origin from the maxillary tuberosity this is the superficial slip because if you will cut the superficial slip you will now able to see the whole deep uh, deep placed larger part of lateral pterygoid and if i will cut this larger part of lateral pterygoid below that you can see the origin of this muscle which is your deep part of medial pterygoid and the origin is not visible because the origin is hidden by the lateral pterygoid that's why it is known as deep head so in this diagram i just told you what is the maxillary tuberosity apart from that you can appreciate this is your lateral plate or you can say lateral pterygoid plate now this lateral pterygoid plate is having the inner surface and outer surface in the class of lateral pterygoid i told you that the outer surface will give rise to the larger part of lateral pterygoid now today we are talking about the medial surface 
of lateral pterygoid plate. Now this medial surface of lateral pterygoid plate give rise to the origin of deep part of medial pterygoid muscle. So in this diagram again you can see that this is the lateral pterygoid plate. Now on this lateral pterygoid plate, outer side you can see this is the origin of lateral pterygoid. But on the inner side, you are able to see this muscle is emerging out. And this muscle is the deep head of medial pterygoid. So at the important point which you have to remember, we are talking about these two heads, superficial head and the deep head in response to this larger lateral head, lower head of lateral pterygoid muscle. Now we'll talk about the origin point of the deep head which I just told you from the lateral pterygoid plate but it is from the medial surface and the lateral pterygoid from lateral surface. So this is the difference which you have to keep in mind apart from that with the adjacent part of palatine bone. The muscle runs downward from the lateral pterygoid plate at nearly a right angle to the lateral pterygoid muscle. Now this is the important thing which you have to remember that when you will see the direction of muscle fibers. Now this is the direction of muscle fibers of your lateral pterygoid. But when you will see the larger deep part of medial pterygoid, you will realize that there is almost right angle of these fibers. So the fibers are having the right angle to each other and this is the important pattern to understand the action of these two muscles. Clear? Then we'll talk about the insertion. Now when you will see the insertion, now this is the first you have to understand inner surface of your mandible. Now when you will see the medial side of the mandible, you can see that this is the mandibular foramen. Now through this mandibular foramen, you have the entry of inferior alveolar nerve and inferior alveolar artery. Now there is a mylohyoid line. So this is the mylohyoid line. So behind the mylohyoid line and below the mandibular canal on inner side of the angle of mandible and ramus on the inner side of the angle of mandible, not outer side, I am talking about the medial surface of the angle of mandible, you have the major portion or the roughness of the bone for the medial pterygoid muscle. So this muscle passes at around 45 degree laterally to reach the angle of mandible, the fiber insert by a strong tendinous lamina. And this strong tendinous lamina is responsible for the roughness on inner side of the bone and it ultimately insert on medial surface of the angle of ramus of mandible. That is the most important question for your viva. And if you will see, if you will demarcate this area, this area is as high as your mandibular foramen and as forward as mylohyoid groove. That means the height of the insertion correspond to this mandibular foramen and anteriorly it extend to the posterior part of mylohyoid groove. So this much area is assigned for the insertion of tendinous part of mylohyoid muscle, uh, this medial pterygoid muscle. Now what is the nerve supply? Now you know that all the muscles of mastication, all the four basically the principal muscles, all these four principal muscles supplied by branches of mandibular nerve. And you know that mandibular nerve is a nerve of first pharyngeal arch. So these all four muscles develop from the first arch. But the important thing is that medial pterygoid muscle is receiving the branch directly from the trunk of mandibular nerve because you learn that mandibular nerve is having anterior division, posterior division but this nerve to medial pterygoid is not a branch of division, it is a direct branch of the trunk of your mandibular nerve. So this is the again important question for your exam. So here in this diagram, you can see again the inner side of the mandible where this sky blue area is denoting the area for attachment of medial pterygoid. Clear? Now we'll move to the relations of medial pterygoid which is again an important question for your exam. Now when you will see the relation, you have to first understand the relation of lingual nerve. Now dear students, here you can appreciate the lingual nerve. In the class of lateral pterygoid, I told you that lingual nerve lies outside the uh, 
uh, your this is the lingual nerve which lies along the inferior border of your lateral pterygoid it lies along the inferior border of lateral pterygoid but in this diagram you are not able to appreciate the origin of lingual nerve because lingual nerve is arising somewhere here from your mandibular nerve it is arising from mandibular nerve and i just told you that the deep part is deep to the lateral pterygoid muscle the deep part of medial pterygoid is deep to the lateral pterygoid muscle and we know that foramen oval is also deep to the lateral pterygoid muscle so when this now will come out it becomes sandwich between the medial pterygoid and lateral pterygoid clear so here the important relation is that lingual nerve is deep to the lateral pterygoid but superficial to the medial pterygoid and we are basically talking about their major or bulky part of the muscle rather than their smaller parts so if you will see this diagram to understand the relation of lingual nerve students you can see that we have removed this muscle now this muscle is the lateral pterygoid now once you will remove the lateral pterygoid after that you can see the lingual nerve is going downward and it becomes superficial to the medial pterygoid if i will draw the muscle here if you will draw the muscle here which is going towards the neck of mandible this is your lateral pterygoid cone shaped muscle then you will realize this lingual nerve is now not visible you can see the lingual nerve only along its inferior border so this is important to understand that lingual nerve lies superficial or on the outer side of the medial pterygoid but deep to the lateral pterygoid in its upper part or near the origin area now in this section if i will take the section horizontal section like this in this section you can see this is your mandible now this is your mandible and i just told you that on the mandible inner side you have the medial pterygoid now when you have the origin of medial and lateral pterygoid you have to first mark the lateral pterygoid plate so this is the lateral pterygoid plate now we know that outside the lateral pterygoid plate there is a muscle is known as lateral pterygoid muscle so where is the lateral pterygoid muscle this is your lateral pterygoid muscle now inside this lateral pterygoid plate you have medial pterygoid muscle so where is the medial pterygoid muscle this is your medial pterygoid muscle clear so when you will take the section of your head and neck you are able to first appreciate the pterygoid process lateral pterygoid process on the outer surface of the lateral pterygoid you have lateral pterygoid muscle on the inner surface of lateral pterygoid you have medial pterygoid and i just told you that between these two muscle there is a upper part of lingual nerve so this is your lingual nerve you can see that this is your lingual nerve clear so this important relation is always should be there in your mind when you are doing the layer by dissection first you remove this ramus of mandible then you come to across with your lateral pterygoid muscle once you will remove the lateral pterygoid you will see the origin of lingual nerve and behind the lingual nerve you will find the deep head of medial pterygoid muscle so this is the important relation along with the ha you have inferior alveolar nerve and your inferior alveolar artery because again these structures are deep to the lateral pterygoid but outside the medial pterygoid muscle now we'll discuss the deep relation now what you will find deep to the medial pterygoid now if you'll do the dissection deep to the medial pterygoid you will approach almost towards the pharynx now here you have the tube and this tube is continued downward as a esophagus and their tube is known as pharynx now this is your plate and on this medial surface of the plate you have the muscle is known as deep head of medial pterygoid now when you will have this pharynx now this pharynx is made up of muscle is known as superior constrictor 
it is known as superior constrictor and near the upper border of superior constrictor you have the opening for the levator velli palliati muscle plus you have the muscles those are related with this auditory tube so you have to understand that when you are doing the layer wide dissection when you are going from outside to deep side outside you have removed the ramus of mandible then you will remove the lateral pterygoid then you remove the medial pterygoid after removing the medial pterygoid you are going to see the outer wall of the pharynx and along the pharynx you have the some smaller muscles like stylopharyngeus styloglossus you have the levator velli palliati tensor velli palliati and superior constrictor which is important or the uppermost muscle of pharynx clear so what you will find deep in one line if you want to remember deep to the medial pterygoid you find muscles of pharynx clear now the next part is the action of medial pterygoid so the medial pterygoid causes elevation of the mandible and it help in closing of the mouth then it is helpful in the protrusion of the mandible along with the lateral pterygoid now there are two more action along with the lateral pterygoid the first action when there is a one side or unilateral medial and lateral pterygoid contract and there is another action when the two sides medial and lateral pterygoid contract when there is a two side medial lateral muscle contract you have side to side movement of mandible in chewing but when there is a one side contraction of medial and lateral pterygoid then the mandible swing and the chin will uh, goes to the opposite side so this is the important question for your exam that if my right medial and right lateral pterygoid contract my chin will go towards the left side so it is swinging movement it is rather than side to side movement so this these are the four important movements of medial pterygoid muscle now we'll move to the next muscle is known as temporalis now it is a fan shaped muscle which is located into the temporal fossa now you know that this part is known as temporal fossa now in this temporal fossa you can see a big red color area now this is the site assigned for the temporal fossa and it give rise to the origin to temporalis muscle now it is covered by tough temporal fascia which is attached above to the temporal line and below to the zygomatic arch what does it mean the meaning is that if you have the fascia outside which is right now not present now this fascia is a continuation of galea aponeurotica or aponeurosis of scalp so suppose if you will cut this part you are able to see that there is a zygomatic arch so i am drawing this zygomatic arch now deep to that you have this outer surface of temporal bone now there is a fascia which is coming from above and this fascia is known as temporal fascia now this temporal fascia is attached to the temporal line and below to the zygomatic arch now there is a blind space created between the outer side of the bone and deep to the fascia and that space is known as temporal fossa so when you will have the dry skull bone in your hand you don't have the temporal fossa because we have opened the outer fascia now right now in this diagram also you are able to appreciate this area which is known as temporal area but the fossa will form when i will put one layer that is attached to this line above that is your superior temporal line and to this margin of zygomatic arch so once you will cover this part then you will have a blind space deep to the fascia and that is known as your temporal fossa so the muscle will arises from the temporal fossa the inner side of the temporal fascia now it arises from the whole surface of the floor of the temporal fossa it arises from the deep surface of the temporal fascia but it arises from the temporal fossa except the part formed by the zygomatic bone now this is the important thing that this muscle is not arising from the part formed by this zygomatic bone clear now what is the insertion now here in this diagram you can see that muscle fibers are converging they are passing deep to the zygomatic arch so you can see the cut section of the zygomatic arch and then the, it is inserting into the mandible they are inserting into the mandible and this point is known as coronoid process 
it is known as coronoid process but the insertion is very important for your multiple choice questions because there are very specific arrangement of the fibers so the fibers converge and descend from its tendon they form a tendon which passes through a gap between the zygomatic arch and the side of the skull and this muscle insert on the medial surface apex anterior border of coronoid process there are three things which is again you have to remember medial side apex and anterior border of coronoid process now see where you will find these areas so first the attachment is at the apex so this is the tip or apex then this is the anterior border of coronoid process so this is the anterior border of coronoid process and on the medial side not on the lateral side that's why you cannot see any kind of the muscle fiber on this area this area is clear you are not having any kind of the muscle fibers here so you have to be very specific that coron uh, on the coronoid process temporalis is not attaching on lateral part it is on the medial side it is on the apex it is on the anterior border but not on the lateral surface so this is the question of your exam that which part of the coronoid process does not receive the fibers of temporalis answer is lateral surface because lateral surface devoid of any kind of the muscular attachment then the anterior border of the ramus of mandible is also receiving the insertion of coronal temporalis muscle what answer is anterior border almost up to the last molar tooth now here you can see that this is your last molar tooth and this is the anterior border of the mandible now this anterior border of the mandible is receiving the aponeurosis of your temporalis muscle so you can see that this aponeurosis which is whitish in color is going till the anterior border up to the posterior part of third molar tooth so these are the two three important point for your exam that where is the insertion so you have to write down not only on the coronoid process but also along the anterior border of mandible and which surface of the coronoid process does not receive answer is lateral surface does not receive the insertion then what is the orientation of fiber first the temporalis is a fan shaped muscle so it is a broad muscle the anterior fibers are vertical posterior fibers are horizontal now this is these are the posterior fibers which are horizontal these are the anterior fibers which are vertical and these are the middle fibers these are oblique so when you will see the arrangement or orientation of the fibers they are arranged in the three direction anterior fibers vertical middle fibers oblique and posterior fibers horizontal so this is the important thing and intervening intermediate fibers are oblique that means your middle fibers now what is the nerve supply so all the muscles of mastication supplied by mandibular nerve that's why this temporalis is also having the nerve supply from mandibular nerve but it is from anterior division of your mandibular nerve and these branches are known as anterior and posterior deep temporal artery so in this diagram you can see that this is your temporalis now deep to the temporalis the muscle nerves and blood vessels are going and they will supply this muscle from its deep surface and here this white layer which is you can see this cut margin of the white layer this is the temporal fascia which is going to make a temporal fossa by attaching to this upper margin of your zygomatic arch so in this diagram also you can see that there are nerves those are arising and these are the deep temporal nerves and they will supply this muscle from its deep surface now what is the action the most common action of the temporalis closing of the mouth because these vertical fibers when contract they will lift this mandible and it will close your mouth and the second and important function is retraction of protruded mandible 
when you will do the protrusion of mandible you will take out this mandible outside this muscle will pull it back and your mandible will go to the normal position and which fibers are responsible for this answer is these horizontal fibers so these horizontal fibers when contract the direction of pull is in horizontal and backward and this mandible will go back to its position and that is known as retraction of mandible now the third and the last muscle is masseter the masseter is a thick quadrilateral muscle and it is present on the lateral surface of the ramus of mandible and it covers the coronoid process now when we will talk about the origin of masseter it is considered as one of the cruciate muscle it is considered as one of the cruciate muscle because when you will see the superficial and deep fibers of the masseter they are forming a crisscross pattern and they are present in the three layer superficial middle and deep layers they are arranged in the three layer now in this diagram when you will see the masseter muscle this is your zygomatic arch so first before reading the masseter you should have the idea about the zygomatic arch now this zygomatic arch is made up of two bones there are contribution of the two bone this muscle this bone is the zygomatic bone this bone is the zygomatic bone this is your maxilla so maxilla is not contributing in the zygomatic arch it is mainly the zygomatic bone plus this is the part of temporal bone which is actually protruding forward and then you are having this zygomatic arch and this zygomatic arch when you will take the cut part of the zygomatic arch it is having the inner surface which is facing here so this is the inner surface then you have the outer surface which is here then you have the inferior border which you can see from below so this will be the inferior border and when you will see from the upper part you have the superior border of zygomatic arch so when you will see the zygomatic arch it is having the outer surface it is having the inner surface it is having the inferior border and it is having superior border so when you have the origin of the superficial fibers these are the largest fibers out of the three layer and they arises as a thick aponeurosis they arises as a thick aponeurosis so when you will see this part of the masseter muscle you can see that this is the origin of your superficial fibers and this is the white area which is aponeurosis and this area is actually having the outerly placed parotid gland and its duct basically parotid duct which runs here on this aponeurotic part of masseter muscle now this thick aponeurosis arises from maxillary process it basically arises from maxillary process of zygomatic bone and anterior two-third of the inferior border of zygomatic arch so where is the zygomatic bone so this is the zygomatic bone so this is the zygomatic bone so major part comes from the area of zygomatic bone plus it is also having the origin from the zygomatic arch clear so the first and important thing is that major origin of superficial fibers come from the zygomatic bone and a small fibers come from the zygomatic arch which part inferior border then we have the middle and deep layer middle and deep layer combinedly known as deep part middle and deep fibers combinedly known as deep part of the masseter muscle and the middle layer arises from lower border of the posterior one third while the deep fibers arises from deep surface of zygomatic arch clear so again this is the zygomatic arch i am drawing the cut section of the zygomatic arch now on this zygomatic arch you have outer surface inner surface upper border and lower border clear now here you have seen that superficial fibers are arising from inferior border so they are arising from inferior border in few extent Mid middle fibers are arising from again the lower border from the posterior part and you have the deep surface which is arising from the deep fibers arising from the deep surface of zygomatic arch so this much part of the zygomatic arch inferior border and inner surface is mainly giving origin to the superficial and deep part of masseter muscle now 
insertion now when you will see the insertion insertion is on the outer side of the ramus and angle of mandible so you have to remember that on the inner side of the ramus and angle of mandible you have medial pterygoid muscle while on the outer side of the ramus and mandible you have the insertion of masseter muscle and this superficial fibers passes backward and at the angle of 45 degree insert into the angle and lower posterior half of the lateral surface of the ramus of mandible while the middle fibers passes vertically downward again they will insert into the center part of the ramus and the deep fibers passes vertically downward and they will insert into the upper part of the ramus and adjacent part of the coronoid process so in this diagram you can see that this is what is the area of attachment of your masseter muscle now this masseter muscle is occupying the outer part of the angle of mandible and this outer surface of your uh, ramus of mandible plus the important thing which you can understand in this diagram that there is a gap between the coronoid process and condylar process this is known as masseteric notch and through this masseteric notch the nerves and vessels are approaching the masseter muscle so here you can see this now this now is known as masseteric now which is again a branch of your uh, mandibular now plus you have this masseteric artery which is a branch of maxillary artery but the question comes is that what are the structure lies in this mandibular notch so what structure lies in this mandibular notch answer is masseteric now and masseteric artery so in this diagram when you will see the masseter muscle so this is what you have to understand that this is the mandible and outer surface of the mandible you have masseter and the another and most important thing which you have to remember that this is the temporalis and i just told you that temporalis is not having the insertion on outer surface temporalis insert on the inner surface temporalis insert on the anterior border that's why you can see that on the lateral surface of mandible you are not having the temporalis so temporalis is here and this temporalis muscle is not having any component on this lateral part of mandible so mandible is having only the anterior border for the temporalis on inner side you have the uh, along the anterior border again the temporalis but on the outer side of the angle and ramus you have masseter and on the inner side of the angle you have medial pterygoid muscle and so what are the uh, important other thing about the masseter that it is having the intramuscular tendinous septas and these septas produces ridges on the outer surface of your mandible so when you will have the mandible in your hand you will find roughness on the angle on outer side that is produced by the superficial fibers which are having intramuscular septum and that is the masseter now supply again it is a muscle of mastication so it is supplied by the mandibular now but again from the anterior division and action it is a powerful closer of the mouth and it causes ultimately elevation of the mouth Clear? So when you will see the nerve supply of lateral pterygoid, medial pterygoid, masseter and temporalis, what you have to understand that they all are supplied by mandibular nerve. But the important thing is that medial pterygoid is supplied by trunk while these all three supplied by anterior division of mandibular nerve. So at the end of this class, we are able to now understand what are the four important muscles of the mastication origin insertion nerve supply and action and what is the meaning of superficial and deep head of your medial pterygoid muscle what is the pattern of insertion of the your temporalis muscle and layer wise origin of masseter muscle so this is all for today's class thank you